In this video, we will cover the last main software module needed for autonomous driving, the key component relating to machine learning. The machine learning module needs to run near real time on the Pi, which can be a challenge due to the limited processing power. Consideration needs to be given on how to handle the processing delays when running inference with the deep neural network. This is video number six in the overall project. The project is to build a deep learning Raspberry Pi controlled autonomous vehicle. The project will cover the system from end to end, from building the hardware, the base RC chassis, and attaching the Raspberry Pi and the associated electronics, and then getting it all working. It then works through the planning and development of the software that controls it all, as well as the training and the testing of various machine learning algorithms to see how well they go at line following. Now let's jump in. Previously, I outlined the various software modules that make up the overall solution, and talked in a bit more detail about the keyboard input and the motor steering control to allow us to drive and control the vehicle, as well as capturing the camera input and the ability to save the images as well as the speed and motor signals. Now I will dive into some of the details of the machine learning piece. This is the key part for performing the actual autonomous driving. Here the software takes the images from the camera and performs the neural network mapping or inference to calculate the future speed and motor commands, and sends them off to the control module to drive the motor and steering servo. So how do we implement these modules? Well, as we saw before, the camera capture module is coded to continually capture images at a high frame rate. Now the machine learning module, when ready, simply requests access to the next available image. The camera capture process then just writes the next image to shared memory, and the machine learning module can then process the image. This is exactly how the image save module was implemented in the previous video. TensorFlow is used to perform inference on the incoming image data, calculating how to map from the incoming image to the next set of steering and motor commands. On the Raspberry Pi, the TensorFlow processing is a little slow and consumes a significant chunk of the resources, so it's best to isolate this code in its own process. As the TensorFlow model crunches the numbers, the camera capture module happily keeps grabbing the latest images from the camera. When TensorFlow has processed the image, the output is a prediction of the future speed and steering commands needed to drive the vehicle. These get sent off to the motor and steering control module, which interprets the data and commands the motor and steering servo to drive, and the process repeats. This all sounds good, but on the Raspberry Pi, all of these processing steps can take significant time. So let's look a bit more closely. Firstly, the machine learning module accesses the latest image snapshot from the camera. However, due to the neural network processing time, the prediction is not available until a little while later. There is a delay before we can access the actual prediction. And secondly, the neural network processing time also means that we have large gaps between consecutive predictions. Therefore, our speed and steering predictions need to be valid over a reasonably long time duration. One way to reduce these impacts is to go with a lower camera resolution and a reduced complexity machine learning model. Basically reduce the delay and the duration. The approach taken here, however, is to work with these time constraints, and to get the machine learning model to predict a series of future steering and motor commands that span the expected delay and duration times. This predicted series of steering and motor commands gets sent to the controlling process, which then has to calculate or interpolate values to be applied to control the vehicle. Now we know what our machine learning model needs to do, and where it fits in, let's have a look at the model I will use going forward with these videos. 
and the main input for the model is an image snapshot from the camera. And the outputs are the series of future speed and steering commands. In our model, the immediate past history of speed and steering data will also be used as another input. The model is implemented as a neural network using TensorFlow. The model or mapping is normally referred to as a policy when talking about reinforcement learning, and I will generally use that term here. The policy defines the mapping from the vehicle's current state, which we observe here from the current image input and the most recent speed and steering history, and maps this state into a set of actions to be taken, the short-term speed and steering commands. Typically in our policy model, the incoming images will be 368 by 640 pixels, RGB images. They are converted to grayscale before processing. The past speed and steering history can be up to 3 seconds of data, 30 samples with a 0.1 second sample period. And the future predictions will typically be a 1 second block of values, 10 samples with a 0.1 second sample period. Now diving a bit deeper into the policy model. The past speed and steering data is processed by a small convolutional network. This basically convolves across the time dimension and gives an eight value feature vector for each of the speed and steering inputs. The images are processed through a convolutional network that also includes five dense net layers. The dense net architecture seems to give good performance for lower parameter counts. The output of this image processing branch is a 16 value feature vector. These two sets of data are combined through concatenation, and the result fed into a few fully connected layers. The output is two sets of eight values. Now in an attempt to predict smooth sets of speed and steering data, these outputs are treated as the weighting coefficients of basis functions which get multiplied by a constant basis function matrix to generate the, hopefully smooth, final outputs. Altogether, this policy model has around 24,000 trainable parameters. Well, you may ask, is this model structure any good? Well, time will tell. Maybe in the future I will do another iteration of things and try and refine the model, but for now I will stick with this one. Anyway, that's pretty much it with the architecture of the code and the policy. Let's have a look at the pseudocode, and then see how it runs. The machine learning module is run as a separate process. Some of the key parameters are the shared inference memory, which carries the latest image from the camera capture process, and the flag that is used for coordinating between these two processes, so that they each read and write at the correct times. The machine learning inference process also needs to communicate with the motor and steering controller. The inference pipe allows the inference result, the predicted speed and steering commands, to be sent off to the controller. The speed steering pipe parameter allows for all of the past control commands to be sent to the machine learning module, as they are used as inputs to the policy model. Now inside this process, we create a temporary queue for holding the speed and steering data that we receive on the incoming pipe. And we also need to instantiate our TensorFlow policy model. This is trained externally. We simply load up the model here. The loading of the TensorFlow model is probably the slowest part of the whole code initialization. It's best to let this process start the overall run flag. And then it signals to the camera capture process via the flag that it is ready to receive an image, and the main loop starts. It waits, blocking for the flag to show that a new image is available in the shared memory. When the image is available, it firstly grabs any updated speed and steering data from the pipe, and stores it into the local FIFO queue. It then grabs the relevant data slice needed for inference. Now the policy can process the image in shared memory, and the slice of speed and steering data to calculate the next sequence of speed and steering data. The code then sends these predictions, non-blocking, on the outgoing inference pipe, and resets the flag to tell the camera capture process that it's ready to receive another image from the camera. The inference loop is fairly simple. 
just grabbing the latest image and historical speed and steering data and calculating an updated prediction and sending it out to the control process. There are no changes to the thread saving the control data. There are some minor changes to the camera capture process. As well as capturing images for saving, it now also needs to capture images for inference. So it now includes the shared inference memory and the associated flag. The custom image process also needs updating to add the shared memory and flag parameters for the inference images. Now in the write method, the processing logic is a little different. For every captured image, it firstly checks to see if the inference process is ready for an image. Inference is the priority. It's needed to control the vehicle. If inference is ready, then the image is written to the shared memory for inference. Otherwise, the code checks to see if the save process is ready for an image and writes to its shared memory if needed. The save process has a lower priority. Delays are OK for saving. The next set of changes are in the motor steering control thread. It now includes the inference pipe parameter, where it receives the results of the machine learning inference predictions, and the speed steering pipe, where it sends out the latest calculated speed and steering commands. So in the main loop, as before, it firstly checks to see if there are any keyboard control inputs and updates the vehicle logic. Next, it checks the incoming inference pipe. It grabs the most recent inference input, and if there was some new data, updates the vehicle logic. Remember, the vehicle logic manages the state of the vehicle. So having updated the vehicle state, the code now gets the next values for speed and steering, and sends them out to the motor and steering. It also outputs the values to a queue for saving, and to the speed and steering pipe to be used as inputs for the inference process. There are also updates to the vehicle logic class. It now needs a method to update the vehicle state based on the machine learning predicted speed and steering data. Remember the prediction is a sequence of speed and steering values. So the vehicle logic needs to be a bit more complex than before, as now it is more than just the keyboard inputs. The get next speed steering data method also needs updating. The way it works is that when this method is called, Based on the current timestamp, it will select the relevant speed and steering data from the most recent inference prediction. And finally, the master vehicle process needs some updates. To create the two pipes needed for communicating between the machine learning and the main motor steering control processes, creating the new shared memory and flag needed for passing images to the machine learning process, and to creating and starting the inference process. Now let's go and see how the software actually runs on the Raspberry Pi. Note that you need to install TensorFlow on the Raspberry Pi. I used a standard pip install, but best to check the TensorFlow site for the latest installation instructions. Also, for this test I am not powering the motor, as the intent is just to see if all the code works as expected. Note that the policy has actually been partially trained using behavior cloning. This will be covered in the next video. So running the software. It takes a while to start up. On the left, you see the camera images with the actual steering predictions from the policy model overlaid on the image. On the lower right, you can see the output of the program on the terminal screen. This code output shows that the main control loop is still running around 0.05 seconds. The camera is capturing frames and the images are being saved to disk. An inference is also processing images. As the vehicle speed values are increased, the predicted steering commands are showing the desire to turn to the right, which is a good sign given that the road actually bends to the right. Note that the CPUs are all running around 80 plus percent. Now, decreasing the speed values, and the steering slowly returns back to the center position. And finally, after quitting, the code output shows the overall statistics. The main control loop has an average period of around 0.051 seconds. The camera was achieving a frame rate close enough to the requested 20 frames per second. The image save process was averaging 0.346 seconds per image. 
and the inference process was averaging 0.31 seconds per image. So we're basically getting a prediction of the next set of speed and steering commands around three times per second. Note that the maximum inference processing time was about 1.6 seconds. This actually happened on the first inference round. All the other inference processing times were less than 0.35 seconds. So overall, it appears that the software is working as expected. So there is some hope that if I can train a reasonable policy, then the vehicle may be up and driving autonomously in the near future. In the next video, I will start working on training the policy using behavior cloning. So till then, if you want to follow the overall project, please hit the subscribe button and feel free to like or comment.